You know, one of the best people at helping me in the early days of hiring uh, was my ex-wife. She came in and she would do a lot of the recruiting work for us. And I don't know what the gift was, but she found people. Um, you know, there's a, just about everybody that I hired through my wife's work is still in the investment banking industry, whether they're a competitor or with us, they made it. In other words, they got through. And that's a tough industry. It chews people up and spits them out at a pretty high clip. In terms of my own people, I can honestly say that there isn't anyone with me now that wasn't fired or in one case came straight to me right out of an addiction treatment program. So I took a leap of faith on people who might have otherwise had a pretty tough time getting employment. And the team I have around me, there's seven or eight people that report to me directly. I'm comfortable that there isn't one of them that's going to be looking for other work or other employment till the end of our working careers. So I built a team around me basically taking a, a bit of a leap of faith on people who I think in many cases made mistakes that probably I can, well, I shouldn't say probably, that I absolutely relate to. Did I pay you for that question? <laughs> I should have. It's actually one of my favorite topics and I, I've actually got the University of Calgary wanting me to pitch on that very question to their faculty council because I am very, very passionate about the fact that I think at both the university and the high school level, every single student should study the three following things. Number one is marketing. I don't care if you're a doctor, or a lawyer, or a veterinarian, a nurse, I don't care what area you study. Marketing is critical to differentiating yourself against your peers in terms of finding work. And it's critical in terms of helping whether you're government or uh, I don't care if you're a division in a hospital. There's a reason that marketing will help. Understanding marketing in terms of getting more budget or getting a new project off the ground or selling assets or finding a buyer for one of your services or products, doesn't matter. Understanding marketing. The most valuable class I ever took was called consumer and buyer behavior. I wish I'd taken it three times. I enjoyed it so much. Understanding the value of brand and the <coughs> value of goodwill and the value of a logo and, and post-purchase post dissonance. The, the feeling someone has after they've made an important decision that they might have made the wrong decision. So trying to ameliorate and take care of that, make sure it doesn't happen. Um, all of those things around the marketing world are, are just so, so important. And I see uh, that's one of the key gaps, I think, often, you know, the accounting students and the investment bankers that I run into in terms of trying to get into the investment banking world, no squad about marketing. And yet if you can't sell the deal that you've brought in, it's still stuck. You haven't made a dollar. And so marketing, 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 very, very important. Number two, I think we, as a nation, should start to celebrate and understand the whole concept of entrepreneurship at an earlier stage. It's not about, um, I mean, there's that whole debate, if you saw Trading Places with Jamie Lee Curtis and Eddie Murphy and the debate over, is it nature versus nurture? Well, I think nature, some people are innately more interested, and part of that's cultural. East Indian, uh, Jewish communities, there's, there's cultural support. Um, the, you know, the Chinese laundries, the Chinese grocery stores, the Chinese uh, restaurants that opened up across Western Canada. I mean, some of those were done out of necessity. People would come as immigrants, they had to make a living. What are they gonna do? So they migrate to what they're comfortable doing. But the, as, a, as a nation, we don't celebrate the entrepreneurial process. And one of the things I love about Dragon's Den is it's a platform for doing that. But we don't celebrate that whole process because we don't understand it. My dad, in the second year of running Wilson Mackey, my dad came to me once and said, are you still looking for a job? I'm making a million plus a year. And he asked me if I was still looking for a job. And again, it's people defining you by who you work for not what you're doing and how you're doing it. It's who you work for. If you're not carrying a business card for an organization, you must not be quite making it. But again, that's a mindset. You know, our nation was opened by hunters and trappers and fur traders and farmers, and these guys were the classic entrepreneurs. And I think we forgot over time how important that whole mindset is. I think we send people, students go off to university to be lawyers and engineers, and study, instead of to study law and study engineering, they want to be lawyers and they want to be engineers. If we started training them and educating them about what the entrepreneurial process is, they might say, gee, I'm going to study law and then I'm going to do something real. Not that, is there any lawyers in the room? My favorite, well, sorry, okay, well, I won't go where, no, I, I mean, but I think, I, I've told my son, if he wants to be a merchant banker doing what I do, he's got to pick up two degrees and there's four to choose from. Law, engineering, commerce, 
and general arts, wide open. So I'm not narrowing his course of study, but rather making sure that he's learned how to learn. And a legal mind and a legal training, I think, is invaluable. But I don't necessarily think he needs to be a lawyer to use that legal mind. And likewise, you know, my daughter just finished an engineering degree. Her mother is a, my, her wife, my ex-wife, her mother, is also an engineer. So my daughter's an engineer. She just finished, spent a couple months drunk traveling Europe, and now she's back. And I think she's going to end up at a cooking school in New York City. I'm excited because she's following her passion. I don't think she's wasted her engineering degree at all. Not at all. Her mother disagrees with me vehemently, so we've got a, a gap there. But again, celebrating the entrepreneurial process, Rebecca may come out of cooking school and start a chain. Of, I don't care what she is. I don't even want to hint at that stuff because I want my children to celebrate their own interests and, and, and pursue their own dreams. I don't want them to live out mine. I've never once spoken to my kids about what I think they should be doing in terms of career. Should they be doing something? Yes. So make sure they're doing something. But I don't care what it is as long as they're following their passion. So there's my daughter wants to study uh, to be a chef right after finishing engineering school. Power on. But that comes back to, so the number two thing I think everyone should be studying, this is a long answer to my favorite question, thank you, um, is entrepreneurship. And there's so much to be talked about. Some of it's just raising awareness. I was fascinated by the entrepreneurship class I first took when I was doing my MBA program and there was people doing spin outs of, um, out of large organizations and uh, instead of getting laid off they were taking the division they were working in and the, and, the, uh, and the refocus and the excitement that the people who were the owners brought to the table was, it was, it was empowering for me. The third area that I think needs to be studied and again starting in high school and continuing at university I want to have the debate, I want to have the discussion about what is social and personal corporate responsibility pardon me, corporate and personal social responsibility, get those in the right order um, so I think that the debate, I loved when my kids were upset at one of the schools they went to that um, the school was going to recognize donations with a tree and the more you gave the bigger the leaf and my daughter came to me and said, Dad, this is just wrong. I think it's arrogant if people who can afford to give $100,000 versus people who can afford to give 5000 should get a bigger leaf. They should all be equal. And I said, well, you know, there's often a benefit of giving more and there should be more recognition. She was upset, just tore me apart. I ended up going and meeting with the principal and said, look, you know, my ex and I gave 100 but we want a small size um, leaf because what we weren't respecting was how the kids felt about the competition that was going on amongst the parents to who had the biggest dick, or biggest wallet, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but that, I mean, that came up in discussion, anyway. But my real point was that what was empowering was having the discussion. You know, should, giving, should all giving be altruistic? Well, we as a firm, First Energy, said right out of those shoots that we will make our marketing budget our charity budget. We were shameless about asking for something in return. We wanted recognition. Nothing wrong with that. But at the same time, I also respect my ex-wife who will not give a dollar with her name attached to it. She's an active philanthropist, but it's all done anonymously. She feels just the opposite of how I feel. I think there's leadership embedded in what you're doing. But again, my daughter would point out, you don't have to be arrogant about it. You don't have to have the biggest leaf on the wall to show leadership. Just to finish off on that, the whole concept of having the debate and the discussion over what constitutes good philanthropy, raising awareness in the eyes of these children, having the debate excites me because there's no right or wrong answer. You know, as Mother Teresa said, there's no act of charity is too small. So if we get kids thinking about doing something for their world that we're in, we're going to be better off for it. Mm -hmm.